Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. According to climate alarmists, CO2 is a very powerful gas which can do all sorts of different evil things. Robert Kennedy Jr. had this editorial in the Los Angeles Times in 2008, blaming bad weather on Sarah Palin. In the editorial, he discussed some bad weather he experienced near Cape Cod and said, in the 1960s, we rarely saw lightning or heard thunder on the Massachusetts coast. So I did a search on newspapers.com from 1960 to 1970, Thunderstorm Cape Cod. The search turned up 8,562 matches. That doesn't seem very consistent with Robert Kennedy Jr.'s memories from his childhood. During the 1960s, Robert Kennedy Jr. had to deal with the trauma of the assassination of his uncle in 1963 and his father in 1968. His other memories of the 1960s might not be as clear as he thinks they are. In the last two major hurricanes to hit New England, both occurred in 1954 when Robert Kennedy Jr. was less than one year old. This is what Cape Cod looked like in 1954. Most people don't have very good memories from when they were eight months old. Kennedy also pointed out that it snowed a lot more in Virginia during the 1960s than it does now, and this was also due to global warming and Sarah Palin. This is the snowfall graph for Lincoln, Virginia, which is the closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to where Kennedy lived when he was in Virginia. The 1960s was the peak snow period there, but there isn't any long-term trend. There's no indication that snowfall in Virginia has changed over the last century. In two years after Kennedy wrote the editorial, in 2010, Washington had one of their worst snowstorms on record. In 2009, as Canada prepared for the 2010 Winter Olympics at Vancouver, the David Suzuki Foundation predicted the demise of snowfall in the Olympics due to global warming. And then a year later in 2010, it was warm at the Winter Olympics in Vancouver due to an El Nino. People cited the warmth in Vancouver as proof that global warming was real. And Thomas Friedman at the New York Times cited the record snowfall in Washington, D.C., combined with the rainfall in Vancouver as evidence of global weirding. This came just two years after Robert Kennedy Jr. said they don't get heavy snow in Washington, D.C. anymore due to global warming. So global warming causes both heavy snow in Washington, D.C. and a lack of snow in Washington, D.C. Friedman also said Australia is having a record 13-year drought, which is right in line with what every major study on climate change predicts. Here's the rainfall anomaly graph from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. I highlighted in pink the 13-year period which Friedman was referring to. As you can see, all but three of those years had above normal precipitation, including one of the wettest years on record in Australia. Prior to 1970, Australia was in drought most of the time, but since 1970, Australia has been generally wetter. The trend line shows that Australia has gotten considerably wetter since the year 1900. The year 2019 was the driest on record in Australia, but it was an anomaly, not a trend. As is normally the case with New York Times writers, Friedman had no clue what he was talking about. Meanwhile, 10 years after their Winter Olympics, Vancouver is facing one of their coldest and snowiest periods on record. The entire country of Canada is headed into a deep freeze with temperature anomalies around Vancouver below minus 10 degrees Celsius. I'm looking forward to the David Suzuki Foundation blaming the record cold on global warming. Greta Thunberg's father was named after Svante Arrhenius, a Swedish scientist. In 1913, Arrhenius predicted that global warming was going to make the climate of Canada like Missouri and that Siberia would become the greatest farming country in the world. Greta's family has a century-long tradition of mindless climate hysteria. Another magical property of carbon dioxide is that climate alarmists are now blaming the high water levels on Lake Michigan on global warming. Everyone is talking about the effect of climate change on the oceans, but no one is talking about the effect of climate change on the Great Lakes, said Shello, a criminal defense and civil rights attorney in Milwaukee. And 10 years ago, National Geographic blamed low water levels on the Great Lakes on global warming. And peer-reviewed research backed up their claim. So global warming causes high water levels on the Great Lakes and low water levels on the Great Lakes. 
Global warming causes lots of snow around Washington, D.C., and it also causes no snow around Washington, D.C. Global warming makes Vancouver warm and rainy, and it also makes it extremely cold and snowy. Global warming also causes New York Times writers to make up fake statistics about precipitation in Australia. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is currently about four parts per 10,000. If every person in Madison Square Garden represented one gas molecule in the atmosphere, only eight of them would be carbon dioxide, and that would only be an increase of two since the year 1900. But climate alarmists believe that the atmospheric equivalent of adding two people to Madison Square Garden since the year 1900 completely controls Earth's climate. Climate alarmism represents a level of scientific superstition not seen for many centuries. I was talking to my neighbor a couple days ago, and she said, the climate's getting drier and we all have to get used to it. Reality is that the U.S. has gotten much wetter over time, with the last two years among the wettest on record. The public has been bombarded with all kinds of mindless propaganda about climate, and many people are falling victim to it. It's up to all of us to set the record straight. Toto is doing his part. Visit him on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.